One of the biggest mistakes business owners make when they're starting their business is to mix their business and their personal funds together. It may seem like this is the easiest and most straightforward way to manage their business finances, but in reality, it creates additional work and complexity for the business owner, which is a costly mistake. Your time is valuable and you don't want to spend hours trying to figure out what was a business transaction versus a personal transaction. And if you have an accountant or bookkeeper doing your bookkeeping, you'll find yourself paying additional fees to have them sort through this issue as well. In today's podcast episode, I'll give you the top reasons that you need to separate your business funds, when the best time to create separate accounts is, and how to develop procedures to easily separate your business and personal funds. Keeping your business funds separate from your personal funds is recommended and required for many businesses. It doesn't matter if you're a self-employed individual, a solopreneur, entrepreneur, mompreneur, freelancer, small business owner, bookkeeper, or virtual assistant. Listen in to today's podcast episode that you know exactly what you need to do to keep your business and personal funds separate. I'll even cover how you can pay yourself from the business the right way and not get yourself into trouble when it comes to tax time. You're listening to the Mastering Your Small Business Finances podcast, where we get straight to the point on topics that ultimately affect your bottom line. That's right, as an entrepreneur with a small business, money management, growth, marketing, they all affect your bottom line. I'm your host, Chris Ponick. I'm a certified public accountant, and I've been helping small business owners like you navigate and easily understand these complicated topics for over 25 years. I'm a wife, a mom, a grandmother, and a small business owner myself, so I know your time is valuable. In my free time, I make the best sugar cookies and have mastered an amazing chocolate chip cookie recipe. And that's not just my opinion. You're in the right place. I promise your time will be well spent here. Each week, you'll gain confidence and clarity while making a successful impact on your business and grow your bottom line. Get comfy, grab a cookie, and let's get straight to the point with this week's episode. Hey there, if you're a business owner who wants to take your business to the next level, you're building your business and you're serious about growing your business to your first six figures, trending towards multiple six figures, or even seven figures, I want to invite you to join me in a free consultation call. I've created a business strategy and growth program that is the program that you need that helps you take your business to the next level. It sets the foundation for you to build, grow, and scale your dream business for the long term. It's for you if you are a business owner who desires to build a successful business and you want to do it in the most accelerated, streamlined, and sustainable way and in a way that aligns with your life and the impact that you want to make with your business. I'm really proud of the work that my clients and I do in this program and the transformation that happens for my clients through this one-on-one consulting process so that they can fully reach their dreams, set the foundation for their business, and create belief and actions to achieve what is possible by taking control and understanding their business, which leads to a balanced and more fulfilled life. There are limited spots available because of the very high level of support included in this program and because I'm also very serious about helping my clients get results. I'm helping clients get their businesses started, be more profitable, set strategies to move their business forward, and take control of their business while allowing them the balance and ability to enjoy their personal life. Your business finances are impacted by much more than just your bookkeeping and financial knowledge. You need a solid business foundation. During your consultation session, we'll work together to go over where you currently are in your business and where you'd like to see yourself 
and your business in the future. If this sounds like you, I want you to sign up for one of my free consultation sessions. And if you're at a place where you know that you're ready for this level of business strategy, coaching, mentorship, and support with high-level business discussions that will give you the exact next steps and the ability to reach your goals and achievements, let's get on a call so that we can talk about and see what's possible for you and your business this year. You can go to financialadventure.com slash contact hyphen us to schedule your call today. I'll post the link in the show notes for you as well. Welcome back. Keeping your business and personal funds separate is a must whenever you have a business. I'll even take this a step further and say that if you have multiple businesses, you need to keep each of your business entities separate from each other as well. As soon as you start to have income or expenses in any business that you're starting, You need to have separate bank accounts and you need to keep your personal funds separate from these funds. If you're just getting started with your business or your side hustle, make sure that you set up a separate checking account and a separate credit card for your business as soon as you can. If you're listening to this podcast and you have already started your business and you're still using your personal accounts for your business, I would highly recommend you get your business account set up as soon as possible. You might think it is just so much more simple to use your existing personal bank accounts. I agree that not having to open a separate bank account for your business would be easier, but as your business grows and you have more and more transactions, I promise when you have just your personal bank account, this is going to cause you frustration legal and tax issues, as well as a lot of wasted time. Take the time, set up your business accounts as soon as you start having money coming in and going out of your business, and you will be set for the duration of your business. Let's talk about a few of these issues. First, I'll touch on the amount of time that you waste when you have your personal and your business accounts combined. When you have a business, you need to account for all of the money coming in and going out of your business. This, in a nutshell, is your bookkeeping. Imagine for a minute that you have all of your business and your personal income and expenses in your personal account. You need to sift through all of your transactions just to find the ones that are specifically for your business so that you can have an accurate accounting of your business finances. If you have many personal transactions, this could take up a fair amount of time. More importantly, I always recommend that you reconcile your accounts, and when you're utilizing a computer software system for your bookkeeping, you would need to record all of your personal and your business transactions so that you can reconcile your account. Each of your personal transactions are transactions that you would not need to record if you had a separate business account and only used this account for your business transactions. Not only will you save time by separating your business and your personal funds, but if you hire someone to help you with your bookkeeping, by keeping your personal funds out of your business accounts, you'll save money since your accountant or your bookkeeper does not need to record each of your personal transactions in addition to your business transactions. I've had clients that I worked with that have mixed their personal and their business funds together, and when I was recording their transactions, the personal transactions made up more than 75% of their transactions. Their monthly billing from me could have been reduced significantly if they had kept their business and their personal funds separate. Generating reports for having your tax return prepared for your business is also a much easier process when you have your business and your personal funds separated. Not only will you be able to generate the financial statements that you need to have your tax return prepared with all of your business transactions in one place, but you will also be setting yourself up for success if the IRS ever audits you. When you're commingling your business and your personal funds, the IRS may not only want to look into your business transactions further, but they may also want to dig deeper into your personal transactions as well. 
This could open up a personal tax audit and cost you additional time and money. Speaking of commingling business and personal funds, when this is done, there's a chance that you are piercing your corporate veil if you have set your business entity up as a corporation. Most businesses will set up a corporation to reduce liability and keep their personal assets out of their business. When you commingle your business and your personal funds, you could be opening up your business for additional liability issues when you've pierced your corporate veil. Make sure that you set up a separate bank and credit card account so that you can keep your original intentions when you decided to incorporate your business. When you have your business and your personal funds separated, it's also easier to see an accurate picture of your business cash flow. You can easily monitor your cash flow when you only have your business income and expenses flowing in and out of your business checking account. If you add personal income and or personal expenses into this account, you take away the simplicity of knowing how much cash you have available just from the activity of your business. One question I often get from clients when they are diligently separating their business and their personal funds is how they should pay themselves or take money out of their business to pay for their personal expenses. I'll start off by saying that if your business is set up as an S corporation, you should be paying yourself a reasonable wage from the corporation. This would be done by processing payroll for yourself and withholding the appropriate payroll taxes. These payroll expenses are included in your business's profit and loss or income statement as an expense. If your business is a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, you can easily pay yourself from the business and you would record these payments to yourself as an owner's draw. An owner's draw is not recorded on your profit and loss report or your income statement. When you're a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, the total net income from your business is computed and reported on your tax return. I know it may seem like separating your business and your personal funds will be causing you additional work, but I promise in the long run, you will be much happier with the outcome and the extra time and money that you'll save overall by having your funds separated. This doesn't need to be hard. You simply set up a separate account and once you get in the habit of only utilizing the business accounts for your business funds, you'll feel more in control of your business and your business finances. If you feel like you need some additional help with keeping your business and personal funds separated, I'm inviting you to schedule a free consultation session where we can go over any questions that you have regarding your business finances. You can go to financialadventure.com slash contact hyphen us and schedule a time that works well with your schedule. During your consultation session, we'll work together to go over any questions you might have regarding your business, as well as where you currently are in your business and where you'd like to see yourself and your business in the future. We'll also go over my Master Your Business Foundation Diagnostic Assessment so that you can fully understand your strengths in the foundation your business is built on. I only offer a few of these one-hour consultation sessions each week due to the time commitment, and I'm looking forward to talking with you soon. I'll post links to these and other valuable resources for business owners and bookkeepers where you're listening to this podcast and in the show notes. All right, to recap this episode, number one, keeping your business and personal funds separate is a must whenever you have a business. I'll even take this a step further and say that if you have multiple businesses, you need to keep each of your business entities separate from each other as well. You need to have separate bank accounts and you need to keep your personal funds separate from these funds. Number two, you might think it is just so much more simple to use your existing personal bank accounts. I agree that not having to open a separate bank account for your business would be easier. But as your business grows and you have more and more transactions, I promise when you have just your personal bank account, this will cause you frustration, legal and tax issues, as well as a lot of wasted time. Number three. You waste time when you have your personal and business accounts combined. 
When you have a business, you need to account for all of the money coming in and going out of your business. Imagine for a minute that you have all of your business and your personal income and expenses in your personal account. You would need to sift through all of those transactions just to find which ones are specifically for your business so that you can have an accurate accounting of your business finances. If you have many personal transactions, this could take up a fair amount of time. Number four, not only will you save time by separating your business and your personal funds, but if you hire someone to help you with your bookkeeping, by keeping your personal funds out of your business accounts, you'll save money since your accountant or bookkeeper does not need to record each of your personal transactions in addition to your business transactions. Number five, generating reports for having your tax return prepared for your business is also a much easier process when you have your business and personal funds separated. Number six, when you're co-mingling your business and your personal funds, the IRS may not only want to look into your business transactions further, but they may also want to dig deeper into your personal transactions as well. This could open up a personal tax audit and cost you additional time and money. Number seven, when commingling business and personal funds is done, there's a chance that you are piercing your corporate veil if you have set your business entity up as a corporation. When you commingle your business and personal funds, you could be opening your business up for additional liability issues when you've pierced your corporate veil. Number eight, when you have your business and personal funds separated, it's easier to see an accurate picture of your business cash flow. You can easily monitor your cash flow when you only have your business income and expenses flowing in and out of your business checking account. Number nine, to pay yourself from your business depends on your entity or your business structure. If your business is set up as an S corporation, you should be paying yourself a reasonable wage from the corporation. This would be done by processing payroll for yourself and withholding the appropriate payroll taxes. These payroll expenses are included in your business's profit and loss or income statement as an expense. On the other hand, if your business is a sole proprietor or a single member LLC, you can easily pay yourself from the business and you would record these payments to yourself as an owner's draw. An owner's draw is not recorded on your profit and loss or your income statement. Number 10, you'll be much happier with the outcome and the extra time and money that you'll save overall by having your funds separated. This doesn't need to be hard. You simply set up these separate accounts and once you get in the habit of only utilizing the business accounts for your business funds, you'll feel more in control of your business and your business finances. Number 11, if you feel like you need some additional help with keeping your business and personal funds separated, I'm inviting you to schedule a free consultation session with me where we can go over any questions you have regarding your business finances. You can go to financialadventure.com slash contact hyphen us and schedule a call. And you know I'm going to ask, what's at least one thing that you will take away from this episode that will help your business succeed and grow your bottom line? If you need some accountability, join our private Facebook community and post your action item. We'd love to support you. Thanks for taking the time to tune into this episode of Mastering Your Small Business Finances. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you, I'd love for you to give it a five-star rating and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. Visit financialadventure.com for the show notes, links from this episode, and while you're there, Leave a comment if you have a topic you're interested in learning more about that affects your bottom line. If you're looking for a community where you can ask questions and get feedback about your small business, join my private Facebook group. You can find the links to this group and more on financialadventure.com. And remember, any financial information shared on this podcast is not to be considered professional, financial, or tax advice and should not be solely relied upon. 
please consult your CPA or tax advisor for an opinion on your specific circumstances. I'm looking forward to having you tune in next time. Until then, dream big, follow your heart, and love what you do. Thank you.